Good morning, everybody. It's Midnight and Beyond. Welcome to the finale of Pokemon Platinum. In the last episode, we took down the Sinnoh region's Elite Four. And in this episode, the only obstacle left before us is the champion. Let's go. Have you been keeping well? Thank you for Mount Coronet and for the Distortion World. I'm truly grateful. Together, you and your Pokémon overcame all of the challenges you faced, however difficult. It means that you've triumphed over any personal weaknesses too. The power you learned, I can feel it emanating from you. But that's enough talk. Let's get on with why you're here. As the Pokemon League Champion, I accept your challenge. This is the final battle in the game against Pokemon League Champion, Cynthia! She is by far the most deadly stinking Elite Champion in all of Pokemon. And this is going to be a very terrible time, I'm sure. She started out with a Spirit Tomb that is not going to be the main theme of her typing because she uses all different types of Pokemon, so you gotta be prepared for anything. This is before the Renaissance of Fairy types, so she does not have any weaknesses that we could exploit. So I'm starting with Obama Snow just so we could have Hail activated right away and all of her Pokemon will have to deal with it. Every little bit counts in this fight. I'm gonna use Avalanche to hopefully get it taken care of in one hit with a really strong attack, though I don't know how that's going to fare because it has a bug type move. Of course it does. Everything needs to have a move that's super effective against Obama Snow, apparently. But now that we've taken damage, let's see how good Avalanche does. Okay, it doesn't take it out, unfortunately. But now that it's got really low HP, I might be able to use Wood Hammer and not uh, regret it too much. Okay, it's not going to heal, thankfully. Just enough to where they wouldn't heal, but also just enough to where it won't hurt us all that badly. That was probably our best case scenario when taking down Spirit Tomb. Okay, one down, five to go. It only gets worse from here on out, though. Her next Pokemon is going to be Lucario. This thing's a stinking beast, and it has its reputation for a reason. Even though I have Chimchar, which is uh, good against a Steel-type, it probably isn't going to outspeed it. So I'll send out Floatzel, because that's probably the only thing that... Stands a chance at outspeeding it. We'll go with a waterfall. See if we can get some good damage in there. Not banking on anything on my team being able to one-shot anything on her side. Uh, as you can see, all of her Pokemon are in the 60s, so it was not overkill to me to come in here at level 55. And in actuality, it's probably going to be underkill because I'm going to have to deal with a lot of annoying things like that, for example. Uh, hail falling is also kind of annoying. Now, I'm not going to mince words, like, even though I don't like to mention failed recordings, I had failed recordings, and I know for a fact that because my HP is so low, she's just going to go ahead and try and beat me real quick with extreme speed. So, well, quite literally with extreme speed really quick, whatever. Basically, I want to heal Floatzel right now, because if I don't do that, my whole plan kind of falls apart if Floatzel dies during this fight, and I don't want that to happen. So, hopefully Extreme Speed doesn't do too much damage to where she could just use it twice, and then I'll end up uh, losing Floatzel regardless. I really don't want that to happen. Come on, Floatzel. Okay, it's not. It's more than, less than half, so I don't have to worry about that. Unless she gets, like, a critical or something. Uh, which would not surprise me in the slightest. Let's go with Waterfall again. Okay, she's not using Extreme Speed. Let's go and do that. And Lucario should go down. Okay, we're good. Hopefully things could go a bit differently this time, because losing Floatzel against Lucario kind of made my whole team fall apart afterwards. And let's see, we are unfortunately going to go below half, though. I don't really like the idea of using Floatzel for the majority of this fight, but a lot of her Pokemon are weak to it, so I'll use it as much as I can. Her next Pokemon's Rose Raid. It is a Grass Poison type. Unfortunately, I would love to use Chimchar here, but it can't outspeed it. So, I think it might be a good idea to... 
I don't know if I want to risk losing floats, though, because there are some other things later on that I want to use it for. This may sound kind of weird, but I want to try using Rotom. Emphasis on try. So hopefully Rotom will outspeed it and I could set up a Confuse Ray because I don't know how much Shadow Ball is going to be doing against this thing. We'll try it, see how that goes. It is not faster. It's using Toxic though, which I'm okay with that setup. Okay, so I could definitely get a free Confuse Ray in. But now that Rotom's on the field, I might have just messed myself up because uh, I know what's to come if we finish the fight with Rotom on the field. Uh, but let's, let's worry about that when the time comes, I guess. Uh, get hurt by the poison, so we're going to be going down 8 turns or less no matter what. Let's try Shadow Ball. Uh, if you could hit yourself with Confusion, that'd be great! Thank you! It is a very stinking deadly Pokémon. It was a very much needed upgrade for Roselia. And I unfortunately don't have the ability to use my Fire-type against it, but let's see if Rotom could do the job all the same. Okay, Hail's still falling. And as long as we don't get one-shotted by whatever it ends up using, if it does get the opportunity to attack, we should be good to go. It's snapped out confusion. Great. Energy ball. Rotom, I really need you to survive this one. Electric doesn't resist grass, does it? No, that's the other way around. Oh, he survived! Okay, good. Shadow ball. Let's sink and go. Unfortunately, Rotom's probably also going to go down the process, but whatever. Critical hit! Could have preferred that last turn, but... Or would have preferred that last turn. Whatever, I'll take what I could get. Okay, Hail continues to fall, and Rotom is going down. It was going to go down to Poison at some point regardless, but whatever. At least when I revive it, the Poison will be gone. And I don't know what she's sending out. Could I influence it by choosing a specific Pokemon? What would I want her to send out? She has a water type that I'd like her to send out, so I kind of want to use Chimchar as bait. But she also has a ground type that I'm terrified of, so I don't know if she would send that out instead. God darn it. Let's try... I just have to beg that she doesn't send out her ground type. Oh god, I'm going to regret this. I'm going to regret this so stinking hard, I could already tell. I could already tell. I could already tell. Oh, I thought I would even get it. I thought they would ask me to switch around and whatnot. That's why I sent out Chimchar. I was going to be like, oh, they're going to send out this Pokemon. Would you like to switch? I didn't think it was going to send... Oh, whatever. Okay, at least um, she did send out the stinking water type that I was so afraid of. But right now, Hyper Potion on Floatzel. Because Floatzel is detrimental to our success. Unfortunately, Rotom is gone, so I can't use... Um, can't use Rotom against Milotic. But Leafeon should hopefully be okay, though no my luck it probably has an ice attack that I'll have to deal with, which is just fantastic. So that's a bit unfortunate. Hail's falling though, so that's nice. Uh, if you're playing Diamond and Pearl, she has a Gastrodon instead of this Milotic, which is a bit easier to deal with. And it's also a bit um, more annoying in Diamond and Pearl because her Pokemon are higher level. They lowered the level in Platinum, but they switched out Gastrodon for Milotic. Up to you which one is the more difficult setup. Honestly, I think this one is still more difficult, so... Huh. Honestly, the whole reason why I wanted a male Pokemon with a Tract on my team was because of Cynthia. Because she has female, female Pokemon on her team that I could take advantage of with using a Tract on them. I don't know if I outspeed it, though. But I know for a fact Razor Leaf ain't one-shotting that thing. Oh, god darn it. 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 If I survive it, it might be golden. It, we might be able to heal and stuff. Oh, we survived! We survived! But it doesn't matter because hail. Great. Fantastic. Should have just gone for Razor Leaf. That stings! That's really unfortunate. Let's go with... Apostle's not outspeeding it. it won't, maybe it won't be weak to it? I'm hoping it'll just survive whatever she uses. Let's try Woodhammer. It is slower. I don't think Avalanche would have taken it out. Uh, because water resists ice. Okay, good. We survived. Woodhammer. Let's see that massive stinking damage. Okay, we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going. We're good. We are good. 
We are stinking good, but Abomasnow was gone, and so was Leafeon. I wish I had done that first, though, because I would have liked to have used Attract on some of our other Pokemon. Though, if it didn't outspeed my Lodic, it probably wouldn't outspeed anything else that she has. Her next Pokemon, the Oh, I don't even get to see it. God darn it. She has how many Pokemon left? We took down Spiritomb, Milotic, Rose Raid, Lucario. She has two left. Okay, influence it again. Well, hmm. I know what she'll send out if I send Cricketune out. I'll send out Floatzel first. I think that's our best case scenario. She's sending out Togekiss. Okay, this thing is a stinking beast. It is insanely defensive. It is not as good as it is in the future even because it becomes a fairy flying type in the future, but still, it is sinking deadly in this generation as well. Oh boy. It is part flying though, so I might be able to get some good stuff with Ice Punch. Let's see what we got. I'm at least fully healed, which I appreciate. So, when it inevitably fails to take this down, yeah, it doesn't even go down to half. Shockwave? It has Shockwave? Oh, yeah. Do I want a stinking electric attack of all things on this thing? How much is it going to do? That's way too much. Way, way too much. God darn it. Hail might save us, though. Not this turn, however. We might end up both KOing ourselves and Krikatoon would be the only one left. And there's no way Krikatoon's taking down her final Pokemon. Oh god. Oh, it's not even going to take it out. But she's going to heal, so I can spend this turn healing, I guess. Oh, it has a an electric attack. Of course it does. Heal continues to fall. Okay. That's that. Maybe I should have, like, hoped for the flinch, but then again, it's the same thing as hoping for the freeze. Krikatoon, I'm sorry you have to be a meat shield here, buddy, but... Uh, let's go ahead and use... I do have three max revives, but I don't want to use them yet, because we got after game stuff to do. And they'll be a lot more useful there. Let's try... I want both of you alive. Let's try the Lotzel first. Because Floatzel I definitely want alive for her last Pokemon. Her next one after that, though... Well, no, she only has two, but I'm just, like, trying to think of how many turns I have to work with in terms of healing. I do not like dealing with this in the slightest. The Hail seems to have done more harm than uh, more harm than good throughout this fight. It's only been KOing my Pokemon. Uh, let's go with Rotom. Okay, she's using Air Slash. Krikatoon, if you could survive this, I'll be absolutely amazed. Uh, of course not. Okay. So, that was Krikatoon. I'm hoping I'm faster than it with Rotom. I don't know for sure, but I do know for sure that it won't go down to a single hit, which is not good. Let's see what we got. Let's try... I need a Confuse Hack. I need a Sinking Confuse Hack, because I need more healing on my side. Let's see, I need you to hit yourself Confusion. That is Sinking Necessary right now. Thank you. Okay. It'll still fall in. I'm still going to lose HP, which is not great. Oh boy. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Revive. Um, the thing is, I know that Floatzel's the only Pokemon on my team that outspeeds her last Pokemon, so let's just stinkin'. I wish Double Team could keep me safe from Hail. Uh, let's try Hyper Potion on. She attacked, right? No, I revived. So I don't know how much damage a Togekiss would do to Rotom. So Hyper Potion on Floatzel first. And hopefully you hit yourself one more time. Thank you! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hail's still falling. I wonder if I want to run the risk of double team just to heal up even more. I don't know if I can even get away with it. But maybe I could get away with KOing it instead at this point? 
Let's see how much this does. It's insanely defensive. Let's see. Come on. Let's go. Okay. Good. I don't, don't even have to run the risk of it using an attack on us. So that is good. That is really, really good. Pulse goes to level 57. We'll need all the power we could get. More hail, though. I know she's uh, going to outspeed Rotom with her last Pokemon. Her last Pokemon is the true final boss of Platinum and the true stinking monster of suffering. Garchomp. It is a stinking monster. Rotom does not outspeed it. Keep that in mind. So... I would use Floatzel first, attack, I'm not going to one-shot it. Could I survive an attack from it, though, is my question. Because then I would send out Rotom and then use Rotom's turn to heal someone. Because I don't think keeping Rotom out now and reviving someone else is a good idea because no one else outspeeds Garchomp and no one's probably going to put a dent into Garchomp, which is unfortunate. So, I will switch to Floatzel now and use Rotom as a meat shield later. Okay, the true final boss of Pokemon in general, because this thing has stinking torn up more teams than I can remember. What do we do? Let's start with Ice Punch, because that's what's going to be weak against. If I could get some Freeze Hacks, I will be so stinking happy and cry, but knowing my luck, you know what will happen. Okay, that was a lot more than I thought I was going to do. And of course, it has a Citrus Berry. I thought it was a Critical Hit for a second, but that's just regular damage. It's good to know. If I could get Critical Hacks, that'd be great. Earthquake. Okay. I don't know how scared I should be of Earthquake. It's a powerful move, that's for sure. And same type attack bonus. Can I survive it at the very least? Please? Please? Okay. Oh, God. Hail. Oh, jeez. Oh, God. Oh, jeez. Oh, God. I should be good to go. I should be. Oh, 6 HP. I don't know how much this is going to do, but we got to go for it. Can we finish it off right now, or do I have to juggle around with healing items one last time? We've done it. We stinking did it. We survived the wrath of Garchomp. And we have become the Pokemon League champion of Sinnoh. Just a few minutes ago, you were the most powerful challenger. And just now, you became the most powerful of all the trainers. You are now our newest champion. That was excellent. Truly an outstanding battle. You gave the support your Pokemon needed to maximize their power. And you guided them with certainty to secure victory. You have both passion and calculating coolness. Together, you and your Pokemon can overcome any challenge that may come your way. Those are the impressions I got from our battle. I'm glad I got to take part in the crowning of Sinnoh's new champion. Come with me, we'll take the lift. And by we, you mean me, apparently, because... Okay, I'll meet up here, I suppose. The room ahead is the Hall of Fame. Jeffrey, your last battle was splendid. Oh, hello, Professor Rowan. Hmm. A child I enlisted for my Pokedex project has come this far. It's only natural that I, Kelman, witness the child's crowning glory. Jeffrey, I shouldn't call you a child anymore. You've grown into a real champion. Professor, you still enjoy the enthusiasm kids bring to your research, don't you? Jeffrey, step this way, please. Professor Rowan, please join us. Yeah, take that, May. Rowan gets to go into the champion's room instead of you. It's been a long while since I last entered this room. If your last time here was when I became champion, then yes. That would be quite a long time ago. Jeffrey, welcome to the Hall of Fame. Your names will be recorded for posterity here. 
What you are leaving are the memories of your adventures so far. It's time to record your names, you and your Pokémon. Remember, your Pokémon are partners that grew with you through many challenging battles. This machine will make a permanent record of your achievement. The moment is ruined because Rotom got Mike Wazowski. And that is Pokemon Platinum. <sighs> I remember the days of waiting for this game to release. This was my first time waiting for a Pokemon game to release because when I had first gotten into Pokemon, it was when already Gen 3 was going on. It was when the Yu-Gi-Oh! Renaissance was taking off where Yu-Gi-Oh! was becoming more popular than Pokemon, but... Diamond and Pearl changed that and took the world by storm with this new handheld that was taking the world by storm with its revolutionary dual screen, touch screen of epic epic proportions. It wound up blowing people out of the water and for me it was no different. I spent so much time in this game as a kid. I was such I was so immersed in the world of Sinnoh for such a long time and I have so many memories connected to a lot of the Pokemon that are on the team and out of the team, to a lot of the characters as well, and the locations, and all the events that took place in this game, both the digital events and real-life events that took place, because there were quite a lot of them on both fronts. And the Diamond and Pearl anime still stands, in my, in my opinion, as the best of the best of the Pokemon anime. It's been going on for over a thousand episodes at this point, but if you just want to experience a single season of it, watch Diamond and Pearl. It is very surprising, something you wouldn't really expect from Pokemon of all places. It's incredible. I don't really know what else I could say about it that I haven't said already. I've praised the heck out of it for sure over the years because it just stands as such a powerful risk-taking story that you wouldn't really expect from Pokemon of all places. And they really wanted to push that in the games after how wonderful the anime was, it seems, because uh, going forward, Pokemon stories became a lot more prevalent and ambitious. And we're in for a real treat in the future, I'll just say that. But we still got stuff to do here in Sinnoh, so it's not entirely finished up yet. We still got a lot of after-game stuff to do, and once I'm finally finished with all that, we will be done in Pokemon Platinum, so... I guess I shouldn't be uh, giving my final thoughts entirely right now, but I just wanted to have a quick moment to talk to all of you, because this was such a long time coming. The events that took place just for this LP from beginning to end are vast and varied, but we finally made it to the end somewhat. We're I'm just now finally starting to believe that I could return to normalcy now that I'm seeing this title screen, because... I was honestly just sort of afraid for a long time that I couldn't go back into Alpine either because of everything that happened just affected me way too much emotionally and affects the channel way too stinking much to where I don't think it's going to recover because something something algorithm something something of other YouTube mumbo jumbo that just doesn't ever work in your favor. It's a lot to sink and deal with and it affected my channel immensely so... I really don't know if I will be making any sort of comeback and I don't know what the growth of my channel going forward is going to be like. I really don't know. I guess right now I should just focus on the thing that I wanted to do from the very beginning and that was provide a source of entertainment and hope and inspiration to the people who watch these videos. And even if that one person who gets something out of my videos ends up being me, 
then it'll be all worth it because I definitely am in need of some hope and inspiration right now. So I enjoy these memories that I get to make with all of you and with this channel. So I'll continue to keep at it because it's something I've always wanted to do. And Platinum is such a weird momentous game for my channel because Pokemon was the beginning of Midnight and Beyond. And when I started Let's Playing, I could not have possibly Let's Played this game because of not having access to a DS or 3DS capture card. But I somehow managed to get a hold of one now, and so much has changed since that very poor quality LP back in year one. I'm really happy that I made it this far, and I'm grateful of all the progress I made. And I'm sure that there's only more progress to be made in the years to come. Thank you all for watching my Let's Play of Pokemon Platinum. We're not quite done yet, so I won't say sweet dreams. We've still got a lot more adventures to have and a lot more places to explore within the land of Sinnoh. So next time on Pokemon Platinum, we'll be beginning the after game. And I promise it won't take a bunch of years for me to actually get to the after game this time. Unless Sinnoh remakes get confirmed or something within the time of this video being recorded and the video being released. Famous last words. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.